you and Nick here, and computing has always kind of been in this stage of progressive development. Whether we find our inspiration to evolve from other humans, our desires, or even the animals around us, one thing can be for certain. Our surroundings can better help us understand technology. Today, let's take a pretty clever look at ants and see how the living world can help us better process information. More specifically, build some really cool and important algorithms. Let's check it out. So first things first, I think it's important to discuss the algorithms behind this process before we get into our discussion of ants. So say you have a graph of nodes, which is nothing more than a bunch of dots on your screen that are connected in some way. The graph can come to represent anything from a Pac-Man or game board to the entire continental United States to the observable universe. It's pretty incredible. And the way in which we can navigate these graphs is through complex search and sort algorithms that'll help us get to our destination. Depending on where you want to go or how you want to get there, there is a search algorithm or sorting technique that exists that will help you do that. This is how services like Google Maps work. Anytime you input a point A or point B, Google is running a complex search algorithm that will help you get there. And depending on if you want to optimize your highway route or remove toll roads, there's a different algorithm to help you accomplish that goal. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that it's how services like the internet work. How else are you going to transmit monstrous numbers of bits across a very cluttered graph of information? Okay, now to the cool part. This kind of stuff took us the better half of a century to develop. People have been doing this since the early 1900s, and all we had to do was look at the household ant for a very similar type of ant. Answer. It's really cool and I hope it'll help you realize the great fusion between science, biology, and almost anything that is tangible. Interestingly enough, ants use a pretty random but also very calculated walk procedure whenever they're exploring a new area. They all converge on a site of interest and whenever one ant sees something cool, through the use of pheromones and chemicals, they all see something cool. And so they end up keeping a fairly good running tally of how many ever ants are in the area. Now coming back to the graph example from before, if you think of a giant graph of ants where each ant represents a node, this stuff can be become invaluable when you're trying to model population density or data transfer techniques and it can help us like no other research has done before. And it's crazy to think how an animal that we often render totally useless can help as much as decades and decades of research. This phenomena can be seen in hives, swarms, sensor grids, social networks, and much, much more. And you may be telling yourselves, the ants are pretty useless because they're not going to help us in any way. And you're probably right. We ourselves developed this algorithm that can help millions of services and devices across the globe. But what's interesting is that a technology and piece of research that took us over a century to develop is already part of an animal's inherent biology. And that's downright cool, exciting, and inspiring. I hope you guys can realize that the impetus for creation doesn't have to be from some lofty or grand ambition to save the world, but it can be from something as simple as a bunch of ants walking around. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. For as long as we can remember. We've barely even cracked the surface of its depths. It's been the subject of new